Welcome to our May edition of the Golf Away Tours webcast. And we're pleased to be joined today by a familiar face to many, uh, Natasha Staniszewski. Uh, Natasha, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. I'm looking forward to talking a little golf. I like always talking about golf. That's why we have you on here. So uh, <laughs> a lot of people obviously recognize you, uh, sports fans from over the years, uh, from your time uh, on TSN Sports Center. But tell us a little bit about how you got involved in, in sports, where you're from, and, uh, and how you got to where you are today. Well, I am from Edmonton, Alberta, born and raised. Um, played sports basically my whole life. My dad put me in soccer when I was really young. Um, and then my sister and my brother, they also played sports. We were always in soccer, basketball, volleyball. My brother played hockey. And it was kind of just what we did. Um, being in Edmonton, I mean, it was it's not hard to be an Oilers fan or an Eskimos fan. You're just in it all the time, right? Like it's always around you. So I was a huge Oilers fan when I was younger. And then when I finished high school, um, I kind of always thought I wanted to be an anchor, but there weren't that many women doing it at the time, like a few, but not many. And it just didn't seem like something like a realistic goal that I could have. So I went to University of Alberta. I got a business degree. I did some human resources and marketing for a few years and decided that I did not like having a nine to five desk job. It was not really fulfilling in any way. It's just it wasn't working. So I decided to quit my job when I was 25 or 26, somewhere in there. Went back to school uh, to a little college in Edmonton, got a two year TV broadcasting diploma, and then basically moved around from small town to small town for almost three years, just trying to get more experience, trying to get my reps in, trying to basically get on TV as quick as I could and as, as often as I could. Um, I kind of, yeah, I bounced around everywhere in Saskatchewan and then I made it back to Edmonton where I worked at CTV um, for a couple of years covering sports there. And then TSN, I guess you could use the word discovered me. I don't know. They were aware of me. <laughs> they knew I was out there and they needed somebody to fill a one-year maternity leave at TSN. So they invited me out to Toronto for what I thought was going to be only a year and it turned out to be 10 years, 10 great years. Um, and that's it. Now it's over. Now I'm here. But it was a. It's been a good little. Been a good little ride so far. Yeah, and so many opportunities obviously uh, ahead for you, and uh, uh, we're excited to to see what they uh, what they are moving mm -hmm. forward for you. But um, sports isn't your only love, and for the tens of thousands of people that follow you on on Instagram and uh, and Twitter, uh, they'll know that you love to to bake as well, um, and you have a whip it up whenever um, mm -hmm. episodes that you put on there every once in a while. Tell us a little bit about uh, how you got into a love love of baking. I think it was just my mom always baked. I feel like dessert is just a big thing in my family, like big meals, lots of food, and there's always dessert, whether it's a cake or a pie or something. My mom was always baking, always cooking. And I think when I was younger, um, well, even now, I would say it was kind of a way for me to be creative a little bit because I wouldn't say I'm the artsiest person, but when I'm baking, I feel like I can kind of put my own special flair on it. Or if I'm decorating cupcakes, you can be kind of creative that way. So. I don't know I just like baking and then when I was here working for TSN um, I obviously were at work a lot in the evening so there's a lot of time during the day to do anything you want really and I just found myself baking more often I'd bring it into work so that people could eat all of it because I didn't want to eat all of it mm -hmm. and then I started posting it on Instagram just for fun and people seemed to really like it so then I just sort of invented whip it up whenever and I found it a good way to be on social media other than just like posting a random selfie or just some sort of random thing I just the baking was fun I like taking the photos and that kind of thing so I think mostly it's just a creative thing and I I do have a sweet tooth too like I'm not gonna lie I, I usually try almost everything that I bake and it's just I think it's, it's fun for me to try new recipes um and I guess I I like sharing food with people like I feel like food generally makes people happy right you can celebrate with cake or pie or whatever it's usually a happy occasion when people are eating dessert so I think that's part of it as well Something we can all share, that's for sure. And for those who aren't following you right now, they should because you've got some delicious stuff on there and uh, love, love seeing what you're whipping up. So um, so moving back on to, to travel, uh, moving on to travel and golf, uh, we initially met in Bermuda a few years ago at the uh, Grey Goose Par 3 Championships, which unfortunately has been canceled the last couple of years due to COVID. But yeah. what a great tournament that is. Um, uh, I know I've been there three times and, and I know that... Uh, 
a lot of people that go there love it. I hope it comes back next year. But um, you were there a few years ago and uh, you got to experience the island a little bit, obviously. Bermuda is one of my favorite places. Tell us a little bit about your experience in Bermuda. Well, that was, I think, my first official like golf trip, like golf getaway was to Bermuda. I haven't golfed anywhere besides Canada except for Bermuda. So it was pretty exciting. And I was sort of new to golf then. Like I didn't, I didn't really know anything about golf trips, as dumb as that probably sounds, but it was such a fun thing to be there. And everybody was so excited to be there. And you're at this beautiful island golfing. And it's like, how could it get any better than that? Right. In a lot of ways. Um, the course was great. I remember the hotel being really fancy. I remember we went to downtown uh, one night, like had a really great meal. The whole thing was just, I don't know, from top to bottom, Bermuda was great. Although I do believe it was super, super, super windy one day. Do you remember that? And they had to cancel the whole round, which that was kind of frustrating. But um, I mean, on the whole, I, I don't, I can't think of one negative thing that I remember from that trip. It was awesome. Yeah, and the beaches are great, and it's just such a cool place yeah. to just hike around and so on. But yeah, it was windy that year. The first <laughs> round there, they let us play or made us play, if you will. And I right. think it was yeah. 80 kilometer an hour winds that day. And the next day, it got into triple digits, and they said, we can't do this anymore, which was unfortunate because yeah. we uh, didn't get to play the second round, but it would have been uh, pretty tough to play. So yeah. anyway, yeah, Bermuda is one of my favorite spots and certainly a great spot for, uh, for golf, and there's lots of golf there. So, and you're right um, about the beaches, sorry to interject, but on the, when they canceled that, the round, I mean, I feel like we just went walking and walking all day up and down that beach. And I mean, it was windy, but it was beautiful. It's just, it's just nice to be somewhere tropical, right? No matter what the weather is sometimes. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so yeah, um, Bermuda is the only place outside of Canada you've been so far, but we're going to change that. And uh, we've got a couple of really exciting things um, to announce to people. One we've already announced, the other one we're going to announce a little bit later, so a little teaser. Um, but we do have a contest trip uh, that's up on our website right now, uh, and it's a trip to Ireland next year with yourself and Lauren Rubenstein and a few others. Uh, we're really excited about that. Um, it'll be in, in October of 22, so a little ways off yet. Uh, mm -hmm. I, can't wait. I can't believe it's, two, it's still a year and a half away, <laughs> but uh, excited to get over to Ireland, and you haven't been before, have you? So uh, I have never been, no. Yeah, so it's, um, it's going to be exciting. Uh, what are you most looking forward to seeing in Ireland? I think, I mean, I've been to so many places in Europe already, but I think Ireland is going to be different. I, just the scenery that you see all the time from the travel brochures or commercials or whatever, it just looks beautiful out there. Um, and I'm curious about all these golf courses. I feel like there's a lot of sort of tradition and history there. So I'm curious to see, like I've, I've been to so many great courses in Canada. I'm just curious to see how, in, how they stack up in Ireland, just to sort of compare the two, I think I'm intrigued. Yeah, and if you uh, thought it was windy in Bermuda, um, <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, right. no, it won't be that windy, hopefully. But um, but you do get sort of uh, all four seasons in a day sometimes, and uh, right. it's an interesting. But uh, you know, we're going to the northwest of Ireland, uh, up uh, around sort of Ballyliffin and Rossapenna, um, down to Mount Falcon, a great uh, great resort to stay at. One of my favorite. It's going to be a fantastic uh, a trip and. Um, you, you'll see, you'll just see how the Irish people just love to welcome you and they're just such right. welcoming people and that's what I love about Ireland and that's why we promote it so much here and um, and we're, yeah. we're I'm excited to get you over there to see it so it's gonna be great. Someone so, told me to bring my rain suit and be prepared to wear it not just bring it but be prepared to wear it and I, I feel like I saw a few photos of people in rain suits but they were all smiling like still having so much fun out there golfing so i will be prepared for anything there you go you just have to be a hardy golfer right and i always tell people that if you go out and buy the most expensive rain suit then <laughs> it probably won't rain right because you know you probably won't need it so that's what you have totally. to do. You go out and buy the ex most expensive one you can find um but anyway I love that. yeah it's we'll good. probably have some weather but uh it'll be it'll be great fun for sure and it'll be great hanging out with lauren as well and we're doing another mm. podcast with Warren later and, and we'll get his thoughts on it. But um, obviously a great storyteller. I've been over to Ireland with him before and, uh, you know, he's a great guy to go on a golf trip with. So we're really excited about that. And we had so much interest in that trip and we've had so many entries and people can still enter on our website uh, at golfwaytours.com. But, uh, you know, we got so, many so much interest in it and people wanting to actually you know, asking if they can buy a spot on the trip, you know, instead of winning one. So we thought, yeah. well, maybe we need to do some more trips. So here we are uh, announcing a new trip uh, hosted by 
yourself um, to Casa de Campo in Dominican Republic. And we're looking at doing that in November this year, early November. So um, Casa de Campo, we, again, another place that we promote here because we love uh, we love the resort, the three great golf courses, um, one that was uh, just ranked in the, in the top 10 of courses uh, in the uh, uh, outside of the US, um, Teeth of the Dog. So it's, it's a great resort and, uh, and we're excited about it. And again, uh, you know, what do you know about the, the, the uh, destination and, and what are you excited about for this trip? I don't know much to be honest, but I have a feeling it's going to be, I'm assuming it'll sort of be like Bermuda with like the, when you go with your group and sometimes it's more about just, it's not even about the golf, it's just about the trip part, I would imagine, right? And being with the people you're with and stories and the fact that it's like a tropical place again, I'm super excited about. Um, I love golfing in the mountains here, but I, the tropical part of it really <laughs> intrigues me too. Golfing on big, beautiful oceans, I think will be amazing. Um, and again, just to see how these courses stack up, like the fact that one of them is in the top 100 is, I just get so curious to see what they're actually like in real life. Yeah, absolutely. And, and the views there are spectacular. Some of the holes right on the ocean. The resort itself is really cool. It has some great culinary experiences. Perhaps we can get them to get you into the kitchen to, to bake something up for us, whip something yeah, up for us. Yeah, for think? sure. I'd be down for that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> always. Right on. So yeah, that's uh, we're really excited about that. So um, we're going to be coming out with the details uh, well in this newsletter and uh, people can sign up uh, and sign up quickly because it's going to sell out, obviously. Um, but it'll be November 2nd to the 7th, uh, five great nights at an all-inclusive resort uh, and one of the best in the Caribbean. So uh, we're excited to uh, ex excited to get this going with you and, and perhaps it's the first of, of many trips. Yeah, I hope so. It's a lot of golf in a short amount of time, but I have a feeling nobody really complains about it much, do they? No, everybody wants to play every day, right? You got to play every yeah. day to go on a golf trip. So, so that's great. So um, lastly, before I let you go, uh, we've talked a little bit about Bermuda and Ireland and Casa de Campo. Uh, is there anything else on your sort of bucket list from a golf perspective that, uh, uh, that you can think of? Ooh, good question. Um... I mean, in terms of bucket list and golf, usually I feel like the Masters is on there for a lot of people, but I've already been to the Masters, which I just realized sounds like I'm bragging. I'm not bragging, but I've been fortunate enough that I've been to the Masters. But in terms of playing, I feel like I would love to play in Hawaii at some point, just um, on one of the courses. I've been there three or four times just on vacation, but this was before I learned how to golf. Now that I actually golf, I would love to go golf some courses out there so that's a bucket list thing for sure yeah it, it looks i haven't had the chance of golfing out there either or visiting hawaii oh, interesting. that's on my bucket list too for sure it's uh it looks spectacular and obviously the weather's always perfect there right which is yes uh, the main thing for sure tell us about yeah. your your master's experience um well i've actually been three times which is i can't even believe it when i say that um the most recent time was when tiger won which was super cool um we were there for saturday and sunday moving day and sunday and we had uh chairs on 16 so for the the majority of the morning and the early afternoon we would just bounce around and run around from hole to hole and just watch various groups but by the end of the day you're kind of tired so we would just sit down on 16 and watch as the final groups came through um so when seeing tiger come through um on 16 on sunday he pretty much had won it at that point right like unless he really messed up 16 he looked like he was gonna be pretty good so I think he parted it and then just the buzz in the crowds um for him was was pretty awesome and then I mean to try and go see him on 18 it's literally impossible because everybody's already on 18 right but we got to see him pretty close up on 16 so um that was pretty cool and I've seen a few hole in ones on 16 which has been kind of neat too uh Jordan Spieth the first year I went I think that was 2017 um was trying to catch I forget who but he drained a huge putt on six I've never heard a crowd get so quiet and then like so loud in one second like it's just I don't know the masters it's just so great i'm not like rambling like a crazy person right now but you can't bring your phones on there either right so you have no idea what the score is sometimes they only have the huge white leaderboards on every few holes um so it's kind of a guessing game to even know what's going on but it, there's just something awesome about all of that it's just yeah it's great yeah 
It is, it is. And, and the Sunday roars, there's nothing like it, right? And yes. like you said, it goes from quiet to as loud as you've heard and, you know, on a golf course yeah. and everything else. And uh, um, I've, I've been once before, luckily, but I didn't, <clears throat> didn't get to go on Sunday um, to, to hear the roars, but got to go on, on Wednesday for the practice round um, mm -hmm. and, and Saturday. But Wednesday was cool because you got to take your camera on, on site, right? right. With a par three contest and so on. And uh, did you get to go for any other days or was it just the Sunday? No. No, only done a Saturday Sunday thing. Yeah, yeah, but it's uh, again, you, you just get the roars and it's uh, it's pretty exciting and awesome. Mm -hmm. to go, so. Right on. Well, Natasha, thanks for joining us. Um, and we're super excited to get this going. Um, if people want to sign up again, go to our website and, and sign up quickly because it's going to sell out. But we're excited to get going on this with you and 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 do a, a you know fantastic trip to Casa de Campo. I just hope we can get golfing before that trip comes around. Like I haven't been golfing once this year yet. I, have you? No, I haven't. Oh, I haven't. Like, um, my game is going to be terrible by the time we get going here. Oh, uh, you've got lots of time, lots of time to get ready. And uh, yeah, yeah, hopefully we open up soon here, but um, yeah. uh, cause it's been frustrating. At least the weather hasn't been great. Maybe that's one of the. Uh... Totally. I completely agree. If it was sunny in 25 right now, I'd be way more frustrated, but the fact that it's miserable, I don't miss golf that much actually. Yeah. But we'll be golfing soon enough and uh, and we'll be ready in November as well. So thanks again for joining us and uh, we'll chat again soon. Awesome. Sounds good.